Okay, we, we're just going to talk a little bit more about liver function tests. Um, these are the things that if you're diagnosed with hepatitis B, um, let you know if it's harming you, let you know if it will be a problem in your life, um, and make uh, the virus very easy to manage because you can track what it does the moment it does anything worrying. You're in a position to get medication and help. We've spoken about um, the enzymes, the ALPs, the ASTs, the ALPs, <laughs> the GGTs. So today we're going to talk about bilirubins and proteins. But it should be said, one of the key things to realize, if the ALT is constantly high and we've removed all the toxins, but it stays high, then is the time to often think about using antivirals for hep B. But moving on, bilirubins. Here we are, our friends, the bilirubins. Now, um, again, it's a liver enzyme, uh, a, a liver product, a bile in the liver that's manufactured by the liver. Um, and bilirubin goes up and down. Everyone during their life will be a little bit up, a little bit down with it. It's supposed to change. It goes up and down with stress, strain, that's physical hard work, lack of water, dehydration, um, fasting will put it up. So for Muslim um, patients, Ramadan, bilirubin will go up. Infections, this can be any infection can push your bilirubins up. Exposure to cold. Uh, the inherited genetic syndrome called Gilbert syndrome we usually sees it hovering at 20 to 30 type levels when it should be more like 15. Um, and all newborns, a well, vast amount of newborns, are born with very high bilirubin levels. And just a shout out to our happy mums. You vaccinated your baby when it's born. If the baby goes yellow, it's because babies do go yellow with Billy Rubin. Don't think, oh, have I given my baby hepatitis B and all that fear and misery. Don't go there. Babies go yellow. You vaccinated your baby, so be at peace. Baby is safe. Moving on, uh, Billy Rubin. Now, here's a little indication of a Billy Rubin test. Um, you have indirect bilirubin which is the bilirubin in the blood direct bilirubin which is in the liver um, soluble it's being changed by the liver and ready to go into the tummy as bile and total bilirubin so you can see you add it up basically two plus one equals three that's your total bilirubin okay now Direct bilirubin, the bilirubin in the liver, um, tends to get higher if there's gallstones, bile duct issues, things that take the bilirubin into the gut, um, we'll push that up. And then there's bilirubin in the blood, which is called indirect. Um, and again, um, you can see there are reference ranges for what sort of numbers should be. Once again, medicine being mad, they got two sets of numbers. Some countries use numbers like 0 to 2, 2 to 20, 2 to 17, 2 to 18. They use numbers. Other countries use fractions of numbers, 0 0.2, 1 1.1, etc. Just to drive us nuts. Moving on. Why do we check bilirubin when we're dealing with hepatitis B? Well, mainly bilirubin goes up two times with, with uh, hepatitis B. It goes up when we first catch hepatitis B, and the bilirubin goes high and it's in the bloodstream, and that's why people go yellow. The brown pigment in bilirubin makes you go yellow. So we watch bilirubin closely when people are first infected. Uh, if you've got too much and bilirubin in the blood, indirect bilirubin in the blood, it can damage the brain, basically. So that's why we're really concerned. It can even kill you. Too much bilirubin is not a good thing. Secondly, when people reach 
end stage liver disease and they're old and their liver's not working well it's decompensated cirrhosis or liver cancer time then again the bilirubin starts to malfunction and go very high uh, so we again have to watch out for that which is why we we check for bilirubin and the vast majority of patients have just fine bilirubin or bilirubin that's a little up because of all those reasons we mentioned at the start but if the bilirubin is above 20 constantly, we need to think about um, why. If it gets to 25, 30, see a doctor. If it's 30 to 35 or higher, it's dangerous. Get to a hospital, get help. But we need to understand our bilirubin, but we also need to realize it's very rare that we see these type of rises with it. Here's a little example of the two types of scores in one result. You can see the indirect bilirubin in the blood. There's 5.5 or 0 0.3. Uh, direct bilirubin is 4.1 or 0 0.2. Add those two together, you get 9.7. Add those two together, you get 5, uh, 0.57. And again, that's a very, very healthy uh, uh, a test, uh, lovely. Uh, moving on, proteins. Um, again, the, the liver manufactures proteins. We can learn things from from understanding about proteins. Now, total protein, the amount of protein in the blood. Now, too much protein ca can cause tingling in the arms and legs, uh, and this is very often a sign not of oh terrible liver damage, hepatitis B. But the fact that the person's eating too much meat, protein, breads, uh, and too much salt. It's incredible how many people eat too much salt and far too little veg. Um, so if the proteins are up, try that first. Then we break it down into different types of proteins. Albumin, um, and it should be between 3.4, 5.4. Albumin, um, if it's low, then we worry the, that has the hep B started to affect the liver's function is, is, is the hep B um, making it hard for, for the liver to produce enough albumin um, and, you know albumin uh, is good for fighting off infections and staying healthy so we want that once again though certain drugs and medications steroids, insulin, hormones. And we've got to remember a lot of people are on uh, diabetic medicine, a lot of people are on steroids for arthritis and pain, a lot of people are on hormones for thyroid, um, hormone replacement for older ladies, etc. All these things can do a little bit to raise the albumin level, but again, don't panic. You know, if it's a little up, a little down, don't worry. When we worry is if it's permanently too high or too low. Moving on, globulins, globulin, um, 23 to 35, um, can happen with certain illnesses uh, and also somewhat with with um, autoimmune diseases and myeloma. This is a type of skin cancer. Underproduction um, can occur with cirrhosis, which is why, again, uh, we tend to do this liver function test for hep B patients because it's one more way of, uh, of checking altogether liver health. And again, very seldom will you see problems with proteins, these three, unless the hep B patient is, is suffering from very high outs permanently, very high ASCs permanently and uh, fibrosis, cirrhosis issues. Um, so again, that's what they do. And finally, um, alpha fetoprotein, see over here, alpha fetoprotein, which <laughs> blatantly they're saying there is a tumor marker. Um, and this range is the same there, under eight, some say under five. Um, and this person's test was 4.8. Perfectly, perfectly healthy. 
Now with the AFP, um, we often do it for hepatitis B patients just to make certain there's no signs of, of liver cancer. Um, it's a handy little thing to be able to do a blood test that will show up if there is some sort of risk of liver cancer. Now 0 to 8 is normal, 8 to 15, very important, usually means pregnant in women. I'm constantly dealing with ladies who bring um, thousands of pregnant women around them with hep B and they, oh my goodness, my AFP is a bit high, I've got cancer as well as, um, you know, hepatitis B, I'm going to die. Uh, don't go there, ladies. Um, you, you're supposed to have slightly raised alpha feed protein when you're pregnant. Um, when we're seeing a liver cancer, the score should be more like 300 to 500. So you can see that's a long way from these low numbers here. And again, you know, I've, I've seen people with alpha fetal proteins that are high for other medical reasons, you know, levels 20 and 50. Don't panic till you see a 300 level. Um, and don't imagine ever that, you know, you're suffering from some sort of uh, carcinogenic thrust. So these are more um, facts about the liver function blood tests we do. Thanks very much.